You are listening to The New Man, Beyond the Macho Jerk and the New Age Wimp. Your host is men's coach, Trip Lemire. What can you do if you think a woman is being harassed at your workplace? Are you afraid to simply be yourself around other women at work because you might end up in hot water? And is it ever safe to share an off-color joke with another woman? Janine Becker has spent most of her high-profile career usually being the only woman in the room. Today, she's going to help us understand how we as men can be a better ally to women who may be the target of sexual harassment. But make sure you listen to the very end. I think our very last exchange is the best part of the talk. Welcome to The New Man. Today we're talking with Janine Becker. She's a coach for Purpose Driven Leaders. She's got 10 plus years of teaching negotiation at Stanford, over a decade as a corporate attorney leading teams to close deals for organizations ranging from startups to Fortune 100 companies. She's also an international speaker and presenter, and she's also one of the coolest people I've ever met and a hell of a lot of fun to hang out with. Um, Janine, thanks for being here. (laughs) So happy to join you, Chip. Thank you. <laughs> I just had to say, I've, I've never told you this, but when I when I heard your name, Janine Becker, I just it just reminded me of like in some eighties movie, like the the girl that everybody wanted, like the like the hot, um, what do you call it, like like the the one that everybody had a crush on, like that would be her Aww. name, Janine. Becker. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to get that out of the way, just get my awkwardness out of the I way. I love you, Chip. <laughs> That's a, that's a first. I haven't heard that one before, but I, I'm gl- I like to know what my name evokes. So that's great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you contacted me, well, I guess it was a week or so ago, a couple of weeks ago about, well, we've known each other for a while, but you contacted me a couple of weeks ago and we were talking about, um, you'd asked me about something uh, with, with regards to se- sexual harassment. And as we talked about it, one of the things that showed up was you were kind of blown away like that, that guys seem to have a different orientation to it or we, that we don't see it or that we look away from it. Um, and so I wanted to just bring that conversation here today because um, you've, you've experienced harassment or you've witnessed harassment happening at various organizations that you've worked with over the years. Um, but what you, what you said, had you stay at those organizations were the allies, that you had allies in those organizations that, that helped you in there. And so I'm curious about that. That's what I want to bring into the conversation today is just to help, like, what can the listener do if he sees harassment taking place? Um, How can he be an ally? What can he do to minimize this stuff? And what can he do about it without losing his job or getting entangled in some kind of office drama, uh, that kind of thing? So, and I get it. You're not a loudspeaker for all women. You're not, this is not your big thing in the world to end sexual harassment or anything like that. We know that there's going to be assholes wherever you go. Um, but that's what I wanted to dive in with you today and, and just see where this conversation goes. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm great with that. Okay. Um, and I appreciate the, just the opportunity to have the conversation. Um, you know, I think you said it, there are assholes everywhere, right? Like there've been, there've been people that have been, um, maybe not full, like legal sexual harassment, but certainly made workplaces uncomfortable in many of the places I worked. And the distinction hasn't been about the absence of that kind of jerk, but it's been about the presence of allies and the men and women, but really having men who would stand up and notice, who um, would come to me and say, like, I noticed this is happening, or I've heard this person say something and just ask, how can I help? That they were willing to kind of engage me in the conversation and be present as a place to start. Okay. Not to just not to just avoid it. I think often women talk amongst ourselves about what's happening, but it's much more rare to even have that conversation with the men that we're working with. Okay, great. And, and I want to just get something off the uh, you know out there right now, which is um, coming from a place that women don't need to be saved, they don't need to be fixed, they don't need to be rescued. Um, <laughs> so, what does support look like? Like does, this guy doesn't need to be Prince Charming. He doesn't need to be coming in on a horse that you're a big girl, you can take care of yourself. But that's different than 
you know, being Prince Charming and saving the day is much different than being an ally and just being supportive. That's what I want to start to get in here is that you're not some damsel in distress that can't take care of yourself, but how, wouldn't it be cool to have support and what does it look like for you to be supported? You being women, right? Yeah, okay. I think so. A couple things. One is, um, I mean, this started, I had written a, a Facebook post just in response to, to kind of a Trump junior claim that, you know, if women can't handle some of the basic stuff in the world, basic problems in the workforce, we don't belong there. And this isn't about us not being able to handle it, that often actually when women are doing really well, that's what provokes it. So for example, years ago, um, I was in an office where as an attorney, I was getting asked by a client to work on a lot of his deals and some required travel and we really worked well together. And, and um, but there was a VP or about to be a VP that uh, was upset that his guy wasn't, wasn't the attorney on the deals. Okay. And he just, he, so he, he started asking around, Hey, is Janine sleeping with her client? I mean, why is she getting all this work? So it's assumed if you're doing well, that you must have some advantage and you're using sexuality to, to have that advantage. Yeah, or at least the innuendo put out there to maybe, I think, partly maybe to, to impact me, but also to make the men know, like, hey, there's a risk in bringing women in too much. There's a risk in promoting them too much. There's a risk in engaging them in your work. And so, you know, the, the client, a couple of things that happened. So two allies that really showed up for me that stand out. One was having a, a boss, a manager at the time, a guy who I worked with actually not that long. I'd been in the job less than a quarter, so a couple of months, who was courageous enough to call me straight out and say, hey, I heard this. Hmm. You know, what's going on? And so not, not cho- picking sides, just being curious, just saying, hey, I want to know what's going on. I'm hearing things, and I want to talk to you directly instead of taking part in the rumors. Right. He didn't take part in the rumors. He didn't actually just give me less work. He didn't try and shield me from it. He didn't just go to HR and sort of let it get handled. He actually was willing and courageous enough to have a straight up conversation. Mm. Um, And once he had that conversation, he kind of went back and like, let the VP know, let the guy know like, Hey, this is unacceptable, right? We don't, this is not the way I'm going to let my team be handled or be addressed and kept putting me on big deals. Okay. Right. Didn't, because you could handle it, because you were qualified, because you could handle it. The, the work period. was going fine. The work wasn't yeah. a problem. In right. fact, the work was going so well that that was the problem. Right. Um, and the client, I think in the same way, that client, uh, he stood by me. He was clear in declaring that wasn't an issue. And he kept requesting me for work, even work that required us to do international travel. So in the face of potential innuendo or kind of this, this uh, backlash of just negative comments and rumors, he just stood firm. Okay. So I like working with Janine. She's doing good work. I'm going to, I'm going to bring her in. And so I think, you know, one of the things that men can do really is um, be willing to mentor, promote, and give key assignments to women, um, even knowing that they might be ostracized or questioned for giving too much attention. That if they're thinking, if the question comes up, wow, I want to give this to her, but I'm wondering what people would think, that's a moment to step in and direct and engage it directly. So I can imagine like there's this thing where this guy, he's, he's first and foremost looking to cover his own ass, right? And I'll just admittedly, I don't have a lot of experience. I don't have any experience in this kind of corporate world. The last job I had working for somebody else, I... Uh, I was in an art supply store in college. So the, I've, I've been working on my own since then. I haven't been in these kind of workplaces. But um, the, the mentor you talked about, was a, he was a leader. He wasn't necessarily a co-worker of yours. He was in a leadership position to, to have authority in that, in that scenario. And I can imagine there are people that are co-workers, more on a peer level, that might see stuff happening they don't know what to do. Maybe they've been taught throughout their their lives to just mind your own business, stay in your own lane, um, keep your head down, kind of thing. Or, you know, we talked about this. Like, there's a, there's a fear of offending. There's a fear of of assuming that a woman needs help. That that's a you know, there's kind of that old school feminism of you know getting cut down for opening the door for a woman. That somehow that's wrong. Like that 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 can be offensive. So in this kind of PC culture, we don't really know where to to um to to kind of take a stand, much less just having fear of losing the job or being punished for supporting her. And I can imagine the guy if he if he's gonna create some kind of flack, 
uh, possibly get into a scenario that he's got to answer to his wife at home and like, why are you sticking up for this woman at work? So I could just imagine a lot of places where he would be encouraged to just basically keep his head down and stay in his own lane. So I want to get it. Like I want to, I can, uh, that's just the things that came off the top of my head. Um, and, and not saying it's right or correct, but I can understand why a guy would just kind of put his head down and act like he doesn't see this stuff. So, so what you're saying here is that there are guys that have been allies, but they I, were in an authority leadership position. Oh, go ahead. What well, were you going to say? Both. So the client I had was a peer. So he wasn't any, I mean, he happened to be, I was an attorney, so he happened to be my client, but we were same grade level. He was basically my peer. I just happened to be working with him on deals. Okay. Right? So he was able to request me on deals. But um, I think that can come come from peers as well. I mean, it's interesting, you know, what you say about people getting flack. I think some of the recent news, I, I guess my comment is don't be a Billy Bush, right? Don't be the guy who's going to just in the face of the sexist comments, just go along to get along. And then you're the one who loses your job for it. Right? Mm. Um, I, I can imagine if you actually went and told your wife like, hey, this thing, I noticed this thing happening with this woman in the office and I stood up for her. I mean, you made it seem like she might get some you're, a guy might get some pushback. My guess is he'd get a high five or, wow, I wouldn't know that you actually could, would see that and care. Mm, mm-hmm. So my, my guess is it would go the other way. Right. But um, I think the difference between sort of that saving, you know, it's all on you mentality and it, it is just to be willing to ask the question. Right. It, to come and say like, hey, this is what I noticed or this is what I heard being said when you weren't around or... You know, I saw in the meeting, you know, not even some kind of big extreme sexual harassment, but I noticed in the meeting when you made contributions, nobody commented. And and then this other guy made this kind of the same point and it and it all got attributed back to him, right? Like I noticed, I heard, what did you see? Just to be paying attention. Um, is there something I can do? What okay. would support you? So to I wouldn't expect a guy to read my mind, whether it's my work life or my personal life, but I appreciate the question. What I'm getting from this is that it's not so much that you need the man or a man or anybody else in the office to come and like fix this for you. It just really helps to know that others are seeing this and that you don't feel alone. And that what would have you choose to stay in an organization is whether you felt outside of that organization for some reason like you didn't feel like you were a part of it and it, and what really helps is just knowing that others are seeing you others are witnessing you others are noticing what's going on for you and they check in they're 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 in relationship with you about what's going on all i've heard you say is that it feels great to have somebody come up and say hey i noticed xyz was going on i got a story about what's happening is this true is the story true is there some way that i can help you instead of just having somebody come in and swoop in and save the day um that 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 right there seems to have just a huge impact, um, more so than okay. Well, we need to run this up the ladder and get somebody fired or whatever, and like some big dramatic. Yeah, I mean, kind of I thing. actually think sometimes people do need to get fired. So I, I, I do think that happens, but I think it doesn't need to go right there to start with. Just having the conversation with the woman and not assuming that you know where where it needs to go. I think is a piece of it. It depends on how egregious, right? I've had. You know, early in my career, I had people send things by email that I think should have gotten them fired. Okay. Um, like what? So like, like, like. I had a, a partner at my first law firm who actually, you know, made lots of comments about my body, but eventually actually sent me an email asking me to come to his office in my birthday suit. Okay. Yeah. I could see where that would be a problem. <laughs> God. Yeah. All right. Yep. All right. Um, and when I brought that to like the EEO committee, like the media that's supposed to handle harassment, I was told that it's not clear what birthday suit means. Oh, wow. Got it. And so what would have helped you in that moment? Because you went, you went up the ladder, you, you like to, to deal with that. And so I would just love to hear like, what would have helped you in that moment? Just having somebody say, hey, I heard about the email or I saw the email and what the no, fuck? No, I mean, like, I, think, I think something that egregious, like there should have been some kind of... Um, remedy, some kind of punishment, right? You don't, the, I think it's merely to take the stand, like this is unacceptable. This is mm. not the kind of office we're going to have. This is not going to be tolerated. Mm -hmm. um, what are we going to do? That It's actually important in the cu culture for women to feel safe, included, and respected. Got it. Got it. Right. Yeah. So what would it take to have me feel safe, like physically safe, 
included, like my contribution actually matters, and respected, really, like as a peer, as an equal contributor to this culture. And in that instance, to have me feel safe and included, this man was my boss. He was a he was a partner at the firm. He was one of the largest rainmakers. And what I heard after that incident was that this was one of a long string of incidents with this guy. He was not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. That the money that he was bringing in was more important than the way he was treating women. And that was clear in how the committee handled it. If he had been a junior guy who probably wasn't bringing in a lot of money, my guess is that maybe it would have been handled differently. So in this instance, you know, I would have expected um, a firm to say, wow, the the safety, the respect and the inclusion of everyone here is more important than this guy and what he brings because ultimately our firm is going to thrive based on our diversity. Our thir- firm is going to thrive based on having everyone able to operate optimally. And certainly, you know, they kept hiring great people and women kept leaving the department because of this guy's behavior. That Got turnover it. is expensive. Yeah. So they're playing the short-term game. Hey, this guy's bringing in money and we can just con- continue to hire people and have that turnover uh, because the scale's weigh in in the short term in that way. You're seeing a long-term play and saying, wait, if you want qualified, uh, you know, really amazing women working here, then this guy, he's got to go. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, or at least, so if he's not going to go, what are you going to do? What kind of, what kind of um, support, coaching, remedies on probation, right? Like what is the plan mm-hmm. for ensuring that this behavior changes? Mm-hmm. You know what helped me in that conversation was when you talked about you know, those things about, about feeling safe and included and respected, but you stated what would have you feel safe and included and respected. And it wasn't up to me or somebody else to figure out what that would be for you. That, that I, as a guy, uh, I, and I imagine most guys are this way that they really do want to get it right. They really do want to be supportive. They do want to be helpful. Um, and we just, we, it's it's when we have to when there, when the opportunity to stay in certainty versus step into uncertainty is there we're going to choose certainty. So if we have that information, if if you're willing to speak up, if we're a willing to ask that question, but also you're you the woman uh, are willing to speak up, that it's just way easier. And I just remember, uh, you know, when I just felt that when you said uh, what you needed to feel safe, included, and respected, there was a thing, and they're like, cool. I I feel like I've got something to work with here. Um, and how I can support you. But that uncertainty thing, I feel like that's the demon here is I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what to do. All these bad things could be a possibility. I'm going to put my head down and avoid this. And then the and then the pattern perpetuates. And I think it's interesting. It's worth distinguishing. Right? There's some things that an organization is required by law to do, right? That is, that is certain. I mean, there's certain things. If this guy was actually creating a hostile work environment, if you're a leader in the organization, you have legal obligations for reporting and taking action. Mm-hmm. And then there's the human side of, okay, you've got women in the office that you actually want to stay engaged, whose contribution you want that like the organization needs. Um, and I think on that side, then this is really, it's more of the human to human conversation of, okay, what, what, what do you need here? Mm -hmm. what would actually have you feel safe feel engaged um and feel inspired to come to work rather than dread it is there a hesitancy to speak up what did you have a when you got this email were you hesitant to speak up because you knew this guy was a big rainmaker and that you were going to be it was kind of a you know you versus the big guy and kind of the immovable object in the organization did you hesitate you know i was young and a little naive i think but I had just graduated from law school and I knew like the key elements of sort of a discrimination claim. And so in that moment, when, when he actually sent something by email, I I hesitated until I had proof. Mm. And then when I had an email, I was sure that it would get handled. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, like I knew what my rights were. I knew what my worth, I knew I had the smoking gun piece of evidence. Like that would be ugly to see in a big court thing. Um, what I, I really, um, underestimated the value that even a law firm would put on, um, it's rainmakers over the law and over the women that work there. Mm. So I, I was actually really surprised. 
But then I heard a lot. I had women partners coming and telling me, hey, if you push this, if you take this to court, if you do anything else with it, you'll never find another job in another firm. Wow. That you will end up blacklisted. And so just, you know, bury it. Um, I don't know that that's true. It's I certainly don't know that that would be true today. It's been a while. Um, but definitely it was, it's, at the time that I saw it, like it felt obvious that it would get handled. And so I was actually pretty surprised. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, I, I, I wanted, I'm glad that you're in here talking about this because I've known you for a while. I know you love men. I know that you, uh, it, <laughs> you're not one of those, these angry women that it just has it out for men and doesn't, you know, just uh, that. And, and I think it's easy for men to turn the volume down on women that they perceive to be the angry woman that will not be happy no matter what, um, for better, or for worse, like for whatever reason that, that there's a, there's a, that's a, a condition. But one of the things that I've noticed about you over the, over the time that I've known you is just how much love and appreciation you have for men and you want to work alongside with them and get things done, do powerful things in the world. And this shit gets in the way, like it's a pain in the ass and, and you want it to be corrected. And it's not about having women be, bigger or better or having power over men necessarily not at all it's it's just about hey we've got to work together here and some of this stuff needs to get cleaned up and here's a pathway to it so i I appreciate you taking the the risk to talk about it here again we talked earlier on that you're not a spokesperson for women and what all women should do or think or say um but i it is helpful to get your perspective based on the experiences you have working with in very powerful uh, organizations doing big deals. You know, this isn't, um, this is a place where, um, like you said, you find yourself being the one woman in the room, so to speak. Um, and so I appreciate you being able to bring your experiences here and and speak up about that. Thank you. I mean, yeah, I worked in corporate law and tech, right? There couldn't be a place that's sort of, so, I mean, it's a very male focus and I love that, right? I love the passion, the energy, the pace, the commitment. I enjoyed working with men and I stayed in that area for, you know, over a decade, um, because I met such amazing people there, men yeah. and women. So absolutely. Um, and the, the power of allies to create a strong community. I think that's true for all of us of just being willing to see, willing to see how others are being treated, willing to ask the hard questions. I think that's, you know, I think that's true for men and women. I think for me, that's where I noticed just what do I do when it comes to issues of of race and other areas where people might be not, where there, where there might be implicit bias or people might not be reaching out as much as it's, it's, I think all of us growing up in this culture, we have biases that doesn't make us bad or wrong. There's a, a really like a wide range from sort of just being here in this culture and what seems normal. And we want to hire people that we're comfortable with and we want to hang out with people that look like us. I mean, down to when I graduated from law school, one of the things, one of the best pieces of advice that I got was before I do my interviews, make sure I've read the sports page, page, you know, read, read up on sports for like the last week before so that I could go in and I could have a good interview. And it's funny, but it, it was important, right? Like I wanted to show up and be like, yeah, I can have the conversation. Um, you know, I just, I watched the Cubs game last night with my dad. I grew up watching watching sports in the house, so that was easy and something that I cared about. Um, but there's a like I and I appreciate the the culture of the men in the office and how do we create a place that works for all of us, where right. all of our contributions are really being valued. There's and you know men and women together, right? How do we how do we do that? And I think. I don't think that women necessarily are all that different, right? We want to feel like when we go to work in the morning that our contribution matters. We want to feel respected. Um, we want to feel like if we have something to say that people are actually going to listen and pay attention. And we want to feel like if, if people aren't treating us right, that others and others around us might notice and care and that they're not trying to jump in and save it, but they're also not going to abandon or pretend they, they never saw anything. Right, right. And that's what I wanted for this talk was that we gave this guy some something in between abandoning it and being the rescuer here. So and I, I think he's got some good tools. It's very simple. Get present, ask some questions, uh, speak up what you're, about what you're noticing. Um, okay. Where can we learn more about you? Cause you're coaching, right? You're, 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 you're doing some powerful coaching, purpose-driven leaders. Tell us about that. How can we learn more about you and what you're doing out there in the world? Yep. So you can find me at my website, uh, www.janinebecker.com um, or on LinkedIn as well. And I'm working individually with clients 
with with leaders and executives at social enterprises, nonprofits, and corporate. And then I also run a coaching group for CEOs and co-founders of social enterprises. So that resonates for you. Would love to hear more. Excellent. Oh my gosh. It's, uh, and, and I just want to name like another thing other than the awkward conversation we had at the top about the, the high school, your name in high school kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> my brain is like, don't say anything about birthday suit. Don't say anything about birthday suit. I've just been so afraid I'm going to have some Tourette's moment where I, I just blurt out. Um, but I think, this is, I think this is the <laughs> point is actually with you in this context, right? I trust you and I know that you respect me. There's nothing that you're going to say here that's going to have me feel disrespected unsafe, right? There's a rapport. I think that this is where people are getting so tight or so confused that we can't just be ourselves. Um, there's a big difference between my boss on, in a firm that I have no personal relationship with, sending an email with a power play, with a bullshit statement, like come to my office in your birthday suit. And you joke, you and I joke in all day about stupid shit, mm. right? Like there is a distinction. You, my sense is that you, um, that, that like there's consent here, there's play here, there's room to be yourself here and there's no power play in you doing that. Well, I think this is the meat of it. And all right. Okay. So here we go. We dropped the bomb here at the end of this thing, but this is <laughs> it, right? Cause I think what's frustrating is not knowing where those lines are. Right. And there's, there's lines in the race conversation. There's Ryan, there's lines in the sexual conversation. And it's like, okay, if you say that thing over here, you're, you're beat up for it, right? You say it over here, it's, and it gets a laugh. And, and so it takes a certain level of awareness to understand what the difference between those two contexts and what could get you fired or you know, thrown out of the community over here and then what, what's endearing and funny on the other side, even though they might be the same thing. So I, I can I can get it, but I can also just feel I felt that like oh don't screw up, <laughs> don't fuck up, don't don't throw a joke out there, and then not know where the line is. So, so part of part of me is just like I'm happy to know that you're asking that question. Mm. If you're sitting with that question, I feel more safe. If you're sitting with that question, I feel less worried. Like I'm not. We're not always going to get it right. Uh-huh. It's not always about like saying just the right thing or being totally, you know, appropriate in this, like with you and I in this context with our peers. Um, but it's knowing that I know that how I feel matters to you. Uh-huh. I, I know that, you know, when we got on this call before we even started recording, you were like, okay, what do you need to feel, to feel good here? So I know that how I feel matters, whether it's our personal life or our professional life. We're not always going to hit the mark, but okay. does it matter? Well, I mean, there's there's some there's a lot of reactivity around this. Like it's this 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 the the the, the PC culture. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 a big deal. And I think for me, it would just, I'd just be really I'd be messed up if I thought I did something that that was misconstrued by you to be hurtful or whatever. So I'm, what I'm hearing here is there's a foundation of a relationship. There's a strong foundation of respect. There's a strong foundation of safety. And then there's room to play. And as you said, we just want to feel like we can be ourselves around one another. Well, some of us are sexist, racist assholes <laughs> when we're being ourselves, right? Like, So when we let down that guard of being professional, that stuff can show up and we get hit, right? So so I want to just draw a distinction. Like, There's, there's a difference between being a sexist, racist asshole, which right, is not okay in the workplace and frankly, is not, to me, is not okay. And like playing and mm. making jokes and, but like an actual, right, sex is racist hassle is the kind of guy, if that's consistent, should be causing trouble in the workplace in a way that would actually need to be contained. The workplace needs to be a place where everyone is safe, respected, included. You can't be that and then make a place for others to be safe and respected. But that's different than like, all right, you tell off, you tell, you tell, like jokes, and you, I mean, you and I know. I know that I'm going to hear about birthday suits from now until the end. Of I'm time. not touching that shit with a. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to laugh with you about it, but like, you can't fire me if I don't show up that way. You can't hold something over me. You can't right actual harassment. Mm. That there's some consequence. There's some power. It's going to impact get... you professionally if you don't play with play this game with me. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's no threat. Okay. You're not threatening me, right? Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. 
I, I think this is a big part of it. Well, especially when you said we just want to feel like we can be ourselves, kind of drop the the effort that it takes to be to play a role and just really be ourselves. And then there's a fear of somehow being pushed out for that or whatever. And and I, I'm glad we went down this road a bit because I wanted to name that tension that I felt of like don't joke around, don't folk up, don't you know whatever. And it's just that's not a fun place. That that's where I don't feel like I can be in relationship with others if I'm having to be all stilted and constipated like that. So, um, yeah, I, I think there's something really powerful here. And I, and I think this is the beginning of another conversation of where this can show up in the workplace. Um, what needs to be in place first and foremost. Um, I'm, I'm just taking a lot away out of that, a, a lot away from this part of the conversation. It's really helpful for me. Yeah. For me too. I think it's a question of, can we clean it up? Right. If, if you said something, right. I trust mm. that if you said something that bothered me that I could say that. Right. You wouldn't just and go get me fired if I said something stupid. We would. You'd come to me and say, "Hey, let's clean this up." Yeah, like what was that about? I'm not okay with that. Do you know the impact of that? We'll talk about it. What did you actually mean by that? Right? Like it's the willingness to have to be in dialogue to mm. actually have a relationship. Okay. Uh, I think I think that's easier when you're not somebody who could then, if I said that to you, get me fired. Yeah, yeah. I and that's what's really cool is that, that you're bringing a really non-reactive. Um, I think some people are looking for injustice. They're waiting for injustice, and they love to react to it. They love to. There's a self righteousness in that injustice. And what I'm hearing from you is just like, hey, wait a second, that wasn't so. That wasn't cool. Let's check this out. Let's let's figure out if there was something else here, instead of oh, you fucked up. Here's an opportunity for me to take you down at the knees, kind of thing. Um, and that's that's what it means to be allies, right? That we have each other's back here instead of, are you a potential threat, an enemy, and are you just waiting for an opportunity to take me down? I think most women that have succeeded in the workforce can't come in with the perspective of like looking for behind everyone, to, every guy to be a problem um, or injustice, because the reality is most of the time we're working with, like in most corporate environments, at least, you know, we're working with mostly men. So if we're there for a reason. We're there, we've chosen to be there. Um, we know they're allies in this space. I don't, I don't think you could find a woman in corporate um, who couldn't list on her list of mentors and allies men because we couldn't get there. We couldn't have survived without it. So the idea that we're sort of looking for injustice or quick trigger to to call it out or I, like I, that's not my experience. I think if you actually ask ask women who've who've been who've made it possible for you to have this career that you have. Um, you'd be hard pressed to find any that wouldn't include men on that list. All right, let's keep this simple. Be yourself, but don't be a douchebag. Don't be weird. And if there's an asshole who's being inappropriate in the office, it's not up to you to be the hero. You don't have to make him your enemy. You don't have to save the day. Uh, and you don't have to play along with his bullshit, but you also don't have to be silent either. It's ultimately up to her to deal with this challenge, but letting her know that you see this stuff and that you have her back could go a long way to helping her rise to this challenge for herself. Sometimes just knowing that we're not alone can be the thing that we need to face the adversity. If these interviews are helping you, then please visit The New Man on iTunes and leave us a positive review so others can discover the show more easily. Thanks for listening.